Hello everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, start by showing you where we are in the pattern. I got quite a bit done since last time. Right on the um, outer edge of the pillars now of the left side. So that is why, of course, it's more vertical and less diagonal because that's the way the colors go. I'll be sort of slowly uh, converting back to uh, diagonal stitching as I go along here. So. So yeah, I uh, gained a whole bunch of subscribers in the last week or so, so welcome if you are brand new. And uh, if you're returning, thanks for uh, coming back to spend some time with me. Really enjoy it. I hope you do too. Okay, so I've got two threads of this color here, so I'm just going to see how long they are. Okay, so this one is not very, I'm going to carry it over to the right a bit. And the other one I'm going to carry downwards. Yeah. So you can see as the, there's sort of a three columns of this color, sort of, I'm going to end up probably with three different threads, which is fine. Yeah, I've been stitching about six to uh, almost 800 stitches a day. So that's why I've been able to make so much uh, progress the last while. And because I went back to my normal way of not closing stuff in, my arms are okay. So <clears throat> yeah, it's worth sacrificing a couple hundred stitches a day if it means I don't hurt myself. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, amazingly, it is still nice weather. It's a little chillier. I've been having to put on my jacket now as well as my uh, mittens and my earmuffs when I do my walk. But uh, yeah, it's been still sunny and blue sky. And normally by now we've got, you know, at least six inches of snow on the ground. So I am not going to complain about the slight chill in the air. I don't mind about that at all. Yeah, I can tell it's been warm because uh, I'm still using my summer pajamas at night. <laughs> uh, it's not that hot, but warm enough. But yeah, I'm not ready for the, the nice warm ones yet. It'd be overheating if I did that. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to have much energy to stitch today because uh, not a good sleep last night. And uh, yeah, kiddo is uh, in um, driver's ed this week. So after a week off, it's back up to getting early, getting up early again. So, but I think he's only got a week or two left. So the end is in sight, just like it is with this project, right? <laughs> Yeah, I love coming down to the end. The whole thing's enjoyable, but that's pretty exciting when you get close to a finish. I always like that. Finishes and new starts, I think, are the most fun. <laughs> yeah, I remember actually I had a meme that uh, I shared that said, you know, life cycle of a handmade project and it starts off, you know, yippee, this is so much fun. And, you know, I'm enjoying this. And then, oh man, this is going to take longer than I thought. Then it gets to the halfway, it says, oh, yay, I'm halfway done. And then, oh man, I'm only halfway done. <laughs> and then at the end, oh, I hate this. I'm never doing this again. And then you finish it. Yay, it's done. And then start all over again. It's like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now I know why people, um, some people are uh, multiple starters. Yeah, I'm not entirely a monogamous stitcher, but I do like to focus on one piece and really get it done. So yeah, doing the sort of the 
boring background stuff on other projects and then the detail work on this one for my main piece kind of balances that out. Yeah, so as you can probably see from my pattern, the vertical bit sort of ends up around here. That's where the edge of the pillar is. And then it's going to be more, more uh, diagonal again. Yeah, so I've been using my Tan Be Gone mitt I mentioned in the previous video every day, and I think that stubborn tan is finally fading. So I'm using that, including a uh, an actual scrub product, like a facial scrub. I've been using that where I was sunburned on my over my collarbones area, and I think it's finally finally fading, I hope, because yeah, I have never had a burn last that long. It wasn't even that severe of a sunburn either. Like, I mean, it hurt, but I didn't blister or anything like that. Because I know there's people who've had much more severe and I didn't have it that badly, thankfully. So I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe it's older skin doesn't bounce back as, as easily, right? Yeah. Because I think the last time I had a really bird sun, bad sunburn was many years ago. So maybe that's it, right? Nothing heals as fast as it used to. <sighs> yeah, they said like it's wild, right? I mean, you can grow another human being in less than a year, but wrench your ankle and it never heals back the same way again. Like, go figure Ugh. Yeah, because I did that once. I stepped off the curb. Well, because I was walking on a sidewalk and it sort of made this L shape and I didn't notice. So I had my foot here and then the other one went right off the curb. Toe of my shoe caught, my ankle rolled forward. And uh, I don't know, maybe I would have been better off it if it had actually broken instead of sprained because... That happened in 2014, and that ankle still gives me trouble. Yeah, I can tell you when it's going to be a big storm because it hurts. Um, and if I sit cross with my left knee on top and my foot is hanging, it hurts if I do that for too long. So, yeah. And I think after this many years, <coughs> pardon me, that is as good as it's going to get, unfortunately. Yeah, it was bad. I had to wear a brace for like over a year to even be able to walk on it. Just one of those stretchy ones. And I can tell you, um, putting them on is not fun. Like once you get it in place, it feels better, but actually having to like push your foot into it when your ankle hurts, yeah, that does not feel good. Uh... Yeah, I actually had that year, <clears throat> pardon me, went to, um, work Christmas party and I have a picture of it on over my uh over my nylons <laughs> I said maybe I'll start a trend you know Ooh. yeah so we got quite a few threads here <coughs> oh pardon me not as many as if it was a max color I suppose but yeah But the nice thing about finally getting to the uh, bottom edge is we're slowly getting rid of those and leaving a nice, a nice clean edge behind as we finish up here. Okay, seeing how long that is. I think I'll use a shorter piece that I've got. Ooh, pardon me. Oh, told you I got up earlier today, so yeah. <laughs> After a few days of sleeping in, I'm feeling that. <laughs> I 
Ouch. I'm sure not to stab myself with my needle. That won't feel good. Yeah, these aren't quite as <coughs> dull as, say, ballpoint needles, but they're not as sharp as sewing needles, so. <coughs> Generally, when I poke myself at it, it's not hard enough to actually break the skin. It's just uncomfortable. Oh, that one. Oh, just barely. I almost unthreaded it. I've got it out. Okay, so I'm just going to see how long this one is down here. It's an okay length, so. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm trying to decide if I want to add another thread or if I want to carry this one around a bit, which I think I am going to carry it. It's not very far, so. All right, so I'm going to start a new one here because it's two paths and plus that one that I parked I know is really short. It's really only going to be long enough to do the three stitches there. So time to start a new one. <coughs> oh, pardon me. This uh, pillars area is really about, about eight colors, I think, in this area. So yeah, I've been sort of uh, blasting through... <laughs> through the thread of this these colors but it goes faster because yeah don't have to change color as often but just enough that I'm not I'm not getting my uh, carpal tunnel or tendonitis or whatever it is Yeah, we also had quite the windstorm last night. You can probably hear my vent cover still flapping around a fair bit. It's, yeah. Oh, what have I got here? Oh, which thread is that? Something has, huh. Something is not so good back there. Okay, what have I caught here? There's a big long loop on the back here that does not want to cooperate. Don't know why it's being like that. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to move at all. Okay, I'm going to. draw it through the stitches on the back here because it doesn't want to uh I can't tell which thread it is and it doesn't want to loosen oh, and I don't really want to cut this to figure out what it is so yeah I put another loop through it and then I'm just going to draw it through the stitches on the back as if I was ending a thread Secure and it won't tangle. There. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it was doing that. That was really annoying. I wasted a couple inches of it securing it like that, but oh well, it's fine. Good enough. So yeah, I was watching um, Cold Case. My son came in, and he's 15, you know. So I said, you know, you're old enough. You could watch this if you want, because he seemed interested. So now, yeah, he got into it, so now I'm not allowed to watch it without him. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to be a... Uh, crime procedural fan like I am. I watch just about everything. Try to solve the mysteries. I like that. So yeah, like my husband will 
watch some of them with me, but they're not really his thing like they are for me. So he uh, he watched um he's a Murdoch Mysteries fan, so he'll watch that one with me. Yeah. I think mostly though because he got interested in the the little gizmos that um the main character creates, so he makes things with um the technology at the time that would have been possible for him to make so like he made a kind of silly putty and um yeah they he worked with alexander graham bell in the story to um make a noise canceling uh thing so that they could um they could isolate the background noise in a recording that he was sent and uh yeah so i think he really likes that kind of stuff and they actually do work with consultants and stuff and scientists to, to make stuff that actually would have been possible with the technology at the time. So that's really fun. Yeah. And my husband's a tinkerer. He absolutely loves to, uh, loves to fix things, makes things. So I think that, yeah, that's what really appealed to him about that, about that show. So. Yeah. Cause we kind of joke that, uh, my husband's chief O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. He got to go to this um, conference for um, engineers who work in the radio industry. And he got nominated for an award for working on um, like uh, remote stuff. He said, I don't think I'm going to win though, because he said there's one guy who has an even more remote one than him, a transmitter station that he actually has to helicopter to. And uh, wear snowshoes if it's snowing. And he said it actually, the building has two doors, one at the ground level. And then there's one about, oh, I think he said 10 feet up or something, because that's how deep the snow gets. And uh, there's no way you're going to be able to get to the ground floor. So it's got, they got a, a uh, door about 10 feet up with a par partial set of stairs that goes down a few feet. So it's kind of hanging in the air, so it kind of looks weird when there's no snow, but that's what it's there for, so that you can still access it in the winter when it's buried. I was like, yeah, okay, I think that guy wins. <laughs> yeah, my husband went, is, has worked on one in Yellowknife, so that is pretty remote, but he was still able to, uh, yeah, he didn't have to take a helicopter in there. They said, yeah, helicopter or snowmobile, because there's like no road to get up there, so... Yeah, we think of everything as being so accessible all the time, but I mean, there are still parts of the planet that are extremely hard to access. Like, yeah, I had a friend who was looking into working in, like, way up north, because the wages are higher. It's like, yes, but the, the cost of living is also much higher, because, you know, all the food has to be flown in. It's not uh, trucked in. So that drives the price of everything way, way up. So, yeah, I mean, plus it's different. Like, I don't think I could work that close to the Arctic Circle where you have either, and then you have months of like, you know, constant sun and then months of like no sun. That part would really be bad for me. Yeah, I don't like the, the lower light levels. I get the, the winter blues, so... Like, I use um, light box therapy, which does help somewhat, but there's really no substitute for actual, actual sunlight. Yeah, like, it, it does help, but it's really only a stopgap measure. Yeah, my husband says it wouldn't bother him, and I think it probably wouldn't. But for me, that would, yeah. Like, that's one reason I don't like the time change, even the one where you, like, supposedly gain an hour, because um, then the sun is setting, like, before you even eat dinner. And it's like, oh, that's so depressing. So, yeah. Just, ah. And we're going to get into more flowers over to the right there, so pardon me, that'll keep things interesting.
I see what I did. I decided to skip around with this, but I think I skipped to the wrong place. Yeah. What I'm actually going to do is unpark it from here, do these. Yeah. yeah, I didn't look ahead well enough this time. That happens. And then park it back where it was. I just took the parking mark off for a minute so it won't confuse me. Yeah, so our bunny came to visit our yard again. Well, he's actually a, a hare. I didn't know that they're so big. They're like about the size of a cocker spaniel. Yeah, like bigger than a terrier. Smaller than a, la a Labrador retriever, but yeah, they're still, they're pretty big. You think of bunnies as being tiny, but yeah, like I said, he's, uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure he's a snowshoe hare because he turns white in the uh in the winter and uh he has huge back feet back paws so because yeah they said um bunnies burrow underground so they don't change color and uh hares they live above ground even in the winter so yeah they're brown in the in the summer and they're white in the winter so but yeah, he's been coming to our yard for many, many years now. So yeah, we had some uh, grass on our lawn that's a bit longer, so he burrowed into there, and he stayed there for most of the day, just chilling. It was pretty cute. Then my son took out his little stuffed bunny, and he set it up on a chair in front of the window so it could, uh, he could look at the other bunny, <laughs> which is pretty cute. He's always doing stuff like that. Yeah.
Oh yeah, and I saw they're gonna start showing Christmas movies. Uh, like in a couple of weeks, not even. Holy moly, it's not even um. Haven't even had a uh, Halloween yet. I keep doing it earlier and earlier. I swear. Ugh. Yeah, I've got to start thinking about Christmas gifts. Yeah, last year, got our son a Nintendo Switch Lite. But I don't know what we're going to do this year. When I ask him, he doesn't really have any ideas either, so. Kind of two threads of this color. Sometimes what I will do is sort of alternate what stitches I do with them so that I can carry them both down, downwards. So rather than ending one, it just sort of depends sometimes on my mood. We have a neighbor across the street who said there was a windstorm and it kind of pushed one of his big trees till it's tilted. I think it got pushed even more in last night's storm. It sure looks like it's at a few more degrees. So, yeah, I hope it doesn't fall on their house. We may need to think about cutting it down before that happens. <clears throat> and it's kind of leaning towards their neighbor's house too. And I think if you your tree falls in their property you might be liable for the damage so yeah apparently there's a whole bunch of tree law <laughs> I found that out when I was following this story on reddit where um oh someone they cut down their aunt-in-law's apple tree without permission and apparently you if they sue you can be liable for up to tens of thousands of damages and be required to replace it with a light tree. So like if it's a mature tree, that's going to cost you a lot because they have to like dig up all the roots and transport it and put it there. And it's, yeah, really, really expensive. So, but yeah, it was, it was really sad because, um, not only was it an old tree, but it was a tree that her husband's aunt's late husband had planted for her before he died so i mean that's not replaceable right they can replace it with a similar tree but the sentimental value can never be replaced yeah That's one thing, our old dying apple tree, it's like in the middle of our yard. So if it does blow over, it's not going to damage anybody else's stuff. So we won't have to worry about that. Yeah. I think even that time we had that storm, which broke a big, like about a third of it right off. It was still in our yard. So yeah. But yeah, I'll never forget that. I heard the big loud cracking sound and was like, what was that? Couldn't figure it out. It's like walked around the house, everything's intact because I didn't go outside. And then, yeah, it was the next day I went outside to take the garbage out. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> a bunch of my trees on the ground. Oh, that's why. But I mean, it's still producing good amount of apples. It's still putting out new shoots. 
So I'm actually having to cut those back. So, I mean, it's being stubborn. It is hanging in there. So, yeah, we're not getting rid of it until it completely quits producing fruit. Yeah, and it's, it's next to the uh, garage, which my husband wants to expand. But we can't afford to do that right now anyway. And um, I told him, no, don't cut down my fruit trees. So, he hasn't. <laughs> When it finally dies, then yeah, he'll finally get his bigger garage. Yeah, because he's working on a uh, Unimog in there. Even in pieces, it takes up all the space with all his tools. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cramped in there, so. Yeah, once again, I said, you know, my hobbies are way cheaper than yours. Like I said, even if I spend 500 bucks on, you know, supplies, for me, that lasts me years and years of stitching, you know, as opposed to him, which could, that can be used up by one tool. <laughs> yeah, and he said he's, so he's welding stuff and it's, he said it's really an art form because um, things don't stay perfectly square, right? They bend and stuff and warp when you melt them, so you have to melt them, weld them, so you have to uh, kind of account for that, and it's really just something you have to learn through doing, and the feel of it, yeah. You can, you can read up all you want on it, but in the end, there's no substitute for actually, actually doing it, right, so... So, like I said, I'm not trying to go column style. It's just, this just ends up becoming that way because of the way the colors flow. So, that one's very raggedy. So, we will just give it a trim. Yeah, so far that pumpkin carving pumpkin I bought hasn't died yet so <laughs> yeah it was funny the uh first our son's first Halloween he was like well he was less than a year old he's still crawling baby and so I remember um his dad was carving the pumpkin and our son kept trying to help by putting the top back on <laughs> Because it was like, well, that's the lid. That's where it belongs. So my husband was trying to uh, scoop out the, the inside. And then our son kept crawling over and picking up the lid and putting it on top to, you know, help. Because that's where it goes. And he'd take it off. And then he'd crawl around over and pick up the lid again and put it on the top. It was pretty funny. So I had a little video. It was pretty cute. Yeah. <clears throat> it was like I remember the first time I served him cooked carrots. That wasn't like baby food. So it was cut up and he, he looked at it with a confused look on his face and then he picked up the pieces and was trying to put it back together like it was a puzzle. <laughs> it was funny. We'll see if I get any seeds this year. Last year when we carved our pumpkin, it had no seeds in it. They were all just the really flat ones that aren't worth roasting. There weren't any like mature good seeds. So yeah, it's kind of a disappointment. I mean, that's part of the, part of the enjoyment of carving, carving pumpkins, right? Getting to roast the seeds. Yeah. Yeah, we did, um, my husband did drunk pumpkins one year, so had googly eyes like, uh, like Cookie Monster. And, uh, we had a couple where kiddo drew it on and his dad cut it out, so they were a little lopsided, but it looked good. And then, um, when minions were really popular, our son wanted a minion pumpkin, so 
My husband carved it where with the goggles, you didn't carve it all the way around, just halfway through so that the light would glow through it. So we cut out like the center for the eyes and then sort of chipped away at the very outside layer for the goggles. Yeah, so he really liked that. Yeah, he actually, he's, our son still has uh, some onesie mini in pajamas that has a hood on it. So I said he must be Kevin because Kevin is the one with two eyes who's long and tall. And then there's, there's one who's two eyes, but really short. He's like a, like a ball. <laughs> That's Bob from, this is from the movie, the Minions. And then there's um, one with one eye in between who's called Stuart. So yeah, he's the Kevin one. Yeah, so, like I said, still got to figure out something for Christmas for this kiddo. Not really sure where we're going to go with it. Do I have another loop on the back? What is going on here? Oh, I see. Ah, ah, that didn't pull through smoothly, so one, one strand of that thread was taut and the other one was not. That's what was causing the loop on the back. That's one thing I like about the two-handed stitching because one hand is permanently on each side, I'm more likely to feel on the back side when there's a when there's an issue. So not always, but most of the time I catch it. So Okay, I think that will be it for this. Yeah, this strand. I won't have enough for those last few. I'll have to start a new one. I think I have a shorter one for that bit, so. <clears throat> yeah, I can't believe, like I said, I'm coming on to a year of this channel. Man, when I first started, it was, uh, I was so nervous. My hands were actually shaking and I would have to film things several times. And even then I was, like I said, oh my goodness, I was so nervous. Even though I wasn't like doing live streaming or anything, right? So, but yeah. Uh, but uh, now I'm not, not so much, you know, maybe I'll live stream one of these days, but now I feel pretty comfortable hanging out with you all. So yeah. So if you've stuck with me from the beginning, maybe you notice that, or if you're new, maybe not, but yeah. Yeah. When I was younger, I used to perform a lot. I was in ballet and then in piano and I played the flute in the high school band and uh so yeah I mean I did a lot of performing and those are live right show must go on no matter what but um yeah I guess it's been a while you know I I quit um band after grade 11 and well we transferred to a school that didn't have a band program so so that was that I still have my flute but I haven't touched it in a long time in fact I would have to look up uh, fingering charts to remember what positions go with what notes because it's been a very long time yeah and I still play some piano I'm like I said intermediate at best but uh I took several years from off and then I, I play it a little bit now, but just for fun. Yeah, my mom wanted me to make it a career, but yeah. I'm not that good. <laughs> I don't have the dedication to do that. Oops. Oh, dear. Drop my scissors on the floor. Fortunately, I have another pair close by. I'll pick those up later. <laughs> I don't want to have to move my stand because uh, I've been getting it back into the right place for the camera is kind of a pain. So, yeah. Since I don't have to, I will not. I'll pick them up later. A bit of a flip. 
fluffy there. Okay, just trying to decide if I want to go back up to the top and carry on or do something out of order. But I think I will go back up to the top and carry on downwards and I won't have to. earlier <coughs> just gonna yeah do another piece there yeah because I've got lots of this color coming up in that area so with multiple threads I'll be able to use them all up no problem so when there's sort of s several paths but not a lot of stitches then sometimes I will carry back and forth around so that I don't end up with a bunch of threads that I end up having to tie off sort of before I can use them up but uh, as this has a lot in this area they'll all be used up anyway so no problem yeah saying the wind was pretty wild there I had to go my uh, recycling it's in bags but it blew one of them all the way across the yard <laughs> this morning. So I had to go and grab it, put it back in the pile so the poor uh, garbage man doesn't have to uh, make an extra stop. <laughs> mm. So as you can see, that straight line of the stitches is ending pretty much right here. This is where the, the edge of the pillar is. So yeah, sort of once all this down here is sort of filled in, it's going to end up going back to diagonal as if I was sort of starting a new pass kind of thing. Of course, if you wanted to use a similar method and keep it diagonal the whole way through, you could do that as well to you. There's no real wrong way. As long as you are happy with it. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of back and forth here. I think I got a short one for that. Yep. Perfect. getting more comfy in my chair here. <laughs> Here we go. 
So sometimes what I'll do when I'm doing this is I will not bother highlighting them individually because I'm going to be switching colors a lot. So sometimes I will just put it on markup mode, which you can do if you have nothing, no color selected, then you can um, just color in any, any color. Like you could even do an area like this if you wanted to. So. See if I have some shorter bits. This color, not that short. Yeah, these are only suitable for about single stitches. So we'll start a new piece. Yeah, pretty sure it can carry because there's a whole bunch more of this coming up. I can see With this number sign. Whoops. I lined those up, but they didn't stay lined up for some reason. Oh my gosh. There we go. that vent cover isn't too annoying for you. Oh, right, I wasn't doing this. I remember now. <laughs> I'm so used to selecting colors. That's what I usually do. But yeah, the wind is pretty, uh, but I mean, I'm used to it. I don't really notice it anymore. So like I said, I hope it's not too, not too distracting for you. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have so many threaded here. Sometimes the needles overlap each other, and then when you pull it, instead of it coming out with the needle still attached, it uh, just unthreads it, especially when it's a shorter thread, I find. That happens more. But then I'm going to park this and unthread it because I am not in that area right now. Dear, pardon me. <sighs> okay, so I finally filled in all the stitches above this number four one that I have parked here once I've done this bit. So then then I can carry on. Now I can carry on with this strand, which is what I was doing, planning to do, so that way I didn't do anything out of order. So if you didn't want to do all those stitches above, you could just do one out of order. That's totally up to you if that's the way you wanted to do it. But I find I like the neatness of this way. Oh, I have something parked in the wrong spot. Yes, I do. Um, and like I said before, that built-in break of switching colors is enough to keep me from injuring my arms. So I can keep stitching for longer. So yeah, when I was doing it where I was skipping I uh, and hurt my arm, I was only able to stitch for part of the day. With this, I can stitch all day long <laughs> if I want to without hurting myself, so.
even into the evening sometimes. Because, yeah, like I said, my husband and son are watching a long-running car show together. So they go downstairs and watch it, and I stay upstairs in my stitching spot and uh, keep stitching away. Yeah. Okay, it almost felt like there was going to be a knot back there, but there wasn't, so we're good. See if I'm going to bother carrying this one. It's not too terribly long. Okay, I think what I will do... If it was long, I would have carried it sort of down over here. But as it is not very long, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry it to this stitch down here. I'm going to tack it down and then park it there. So it's sort of just long enough to do like one lone stitch by itself. That way I didn't have to end it and start it again. And still within an inch. So. Okay. And of course, if you're working on a higher count of fabric, then for you, an inch could go over two big squares of 100. So you could carry even further if you, if you wished to. It's all a matter of preference. Oh dear. Make a tangle here. Oh, look at that. So I did. That's that is a big knot. And it's too tight for me to undo, so yeah. Nothing to do but cut it out. Oh dear. Oh gosh. Go back. <laughs> ah, this thread is kind of static and it doesn't want to go back into the slot on my tray. Hmm. Yeah, so you can see the way the colors are going. I think this is the bottom base of the pillar, which is going to kind of go out like this. So I'm not going to be doing a lot, much more column style stitching. It's going to end up going back to the diagonal as the colors stop going in nice, neat vertical lines like they have been mostly here. Oh boy, neighbor's dog again. I don't know what it is barking at all day long. Ugh, it's really irritating after a while, though. Yeah, I really liked the people who lived in that house before. It was a older couple, and they were great neighbors. But they were tired, and they wanted to move closer to there. To their grandkids, excuse me. <laughs> Which, I mean, is completely understandable. So, yeah. Unfortunately, these people who moved in have a couple of dogs and they don't really do anything about them barking, which gets really, really frustrating. much easier to use that tool to coax it to go to the back side than to try to find the the thread on the back to pull plus I've made the mistake where I've gone to the back to try to pull that to come and I've ended up pulling something that I anchored right out it's like oh great <laughs> uh, now I have an even bigger problem to fix so yeah I really like that snag tool to uh problem is once those dogs start up the other neighbors dogs bark back at them the other neighbors they're pretty good but the problem is I mean yeah they're getting barked at then they're gonna bark back they never started but 
they continue it. So, uh, I just, why do people got to be so inconsiderate, you know? Worst too is when they're quiet for about half a minute. You think, okay, they're done, and then they start up again. Like, oh. guess I say I like the nice weather, but one consolation when it's cold is that they have to keep them inside, so I don't have to hear them already day long. Yeah, we are closing in on 90%. We're not going to get there today, but I bet you by next session, I will be past 90%. So I'm at 89.67%. So. Unfortunately, that piece of thread was just not quite long enough to uh, to make it any further. So I'll have to join a new piece, even if it's only for a few stitches. That that happens sometimes. No piece of uh, embroidery floss can land last forever. And I made the mistake when I first started stitching of cutting them too long, and then you would always end up with knots that you had to cut out, or the thread would get really fuzzy and almost shredded by the end and it wouldn't make a nice neat looking stitch because it would get so worn out from being drawn through the cloth too many times so yeah you have to really find that nice that nice sweet spot where it's not so short that you're constantly running out of thread but it's not so long that you are yeah I guess they're running to the problems of too much knotting and your thread getting all worn out and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. oh, must have been a big gust, the whole house flexed. <laughs> mm. Okay, I think I may Take a break here. Yeah. Okay, let's do. I'm just gonna do one more, I think. Yeah, this one. Oh, it was still threaded. Haha. <laughs> but then I unthreaded it. Oh well. Okay. 219, so we'll we'll end at a round number of 220. That sounds good to me. Okay. All right. So, as usual, um, thank you for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.